Doctor Strange has become the Herald Supreme. The master of the mystic arts must prevent the destruction of the universe after Zolos, a mystic from Zarak, sought Strange's help against a planet-eating Galactus. So Doctor Strange had at this point been across the galaxy, shooting like a star, and battled some baddies on Earth. And you'd think he'd have a hero's welcome, well, the magic version of that at least, after facing down Dormammu, the god tyrant of an alternate dimension, and Strange's archenemy. But Doctor Strange sits in his sanctum Sanctorum alone, reminiscing on how bad he has been at holding a relationship. None of the amazing women he has encountered could stay longer than they needed, especially Clea, his ex-wife. He furthermore goes on to think about his many achievements, his allies, and his enemies. He calls himself a fireman rather than a former doctor. Accurate since he has been putting out magical fires over and over. Doctor Strange wants a new challenge, and boy is he about to get one. If you put out a request like that, Sometimes it delivers. He muses before a crimson streak tears across the stars and explodes in front of him, revealing a multi-armed creature who announces himself as Zolos and he requires Doctor Strange's cooperation. His race, the Zaraxian mystics, are currently on the dinner plate of Galactus the World Eater, a planet-sized being with a galaxy-sized appetite. And Zolos had even engaged the Silver Surfer, Galactus's herald, a being who tells people they're about to be snacked on by Galactus in combat, defeating and capturing him. The Surfer utters the word Earth, and Zolos demands to know why Earth has not been consumed by Galactus. Doctor Strange does not have an answer, and Zolos, being from a race that thrives on confrontation, decides to try and beat an answer out of Strange. Emphasis on the word try. It goes about as well as you would expect. Oh wait, Zolos actually managed to subdue Doctor Strange. Strange underestimates Zolos. The Zaraxian has the power of his entire race. Zolos uses numerous magic artifacts in Strange's possession, wretches his astral body across the galaxy, and exiles Galaxus into the depths of the mystic realms. Strange admonishes Zolos, but the alien does not want to listen and sends Strange back to his body. And so, Doctor Strange declares that he has another fire to put out. From which point, Doctor Strange forges new magical tools, dons a new costume, and jumps into the mystic realm. A place where magic makes the rules, not the laws of science. And now, where demons flee in mass from Galactus. Things only get worse as Galactus is consuming one of the magic realms. Doctor Strange's fear is being realized. Galactus has adapted to absorbing magic. When it comes to bringing you some of the best comic content on the platform, Plot Armor has you covered. So subscribe to the channel with notifications on for more. Doctor Strange speaks with Galactus and tries to find him a way out of the mystic realm, but Galactus's hunger compels him to eat, and he blasts Doctor Strange away. Way. A demon by the name of Misan Hagorath attacks Galactus as they were intruding on his territory. But the Eater of Worlds has sampled new energy and breaks the demon like a toy. Doctor Strange then uses the spell that Zolos used on him to hold Galactus, which was a Herculean task indeed, but something or someone empowers Strange and he manages to send Galactus away and put him in holding. The ex-wife of Doctor Strange and Dormammu's niece Clea steps through a portal, having assisted Doctor Strange's feet. And yeah, you heard that right, Doctor Strange is married to the niece of his arch nemesis. Exhausted, Doctor Strange passes out and awakens in Clea's bed, having been out for a day. Galactus's existence is creating imbalance in the mystic realm, and they need him gone. Umar, sister of Dormammu, appears with a small army of magic beings, harping on the need for allies making strange bedfellows. Strange and Clea go to confront Galactus, who has adapted to magic. The more magic energy Galactus consumes, the closer he comes to insanity. The World Eater demands sustenance from a scientific realm, and to appease him by finding a planet without sentience that he can eat, Doctor Strange offers himself as Herald of Galactus. Galactus. Clea confronts Strange about it, but the sorcerer is doing it for the greater good. Meanwhile, Misan Hagorath speaks to Dormammu, who relishes the challenge of facing Galactus as he obliterates the demon. Strange, now the Herald of Galactus, travels the mystic realm for a living world without sentience. But word has traveled fast. Strange is now the destroyer, not the saver. He is rebuffed by a demon who tells him as such, saying that he cannot keep his hands clean from this. And to that, Doctor Strange begrudgingly agrees. Dr. 
Doctor Strange continues his quest for a world free of sentience, but each encounter is less than ideal. He travels through the nether realms where he is guided to a sun-like planet devoid of life, but crackling with dark energy, ripe for Galactus' consumption. Meanwhile, Umar, a Faltine, a higher dimensional energy being trapped in human form, and Dormammu's sister, along with Clea, try to keep their respective guests in line while waiting for Strange. They have been trying to convince other magical beings to aid in their efforts to contain Galactus. Strange returns, and he and Clea lead Galactus to the planet, meeting loads and loads of opposition along the way. Meanwhile, Umar is still forging alliances in case Plan A falls through. All the while, Dormammu watches the events unfold, waiting to make a move. Galactus, upon reaching the planet, feeds ravenously, but the feedback is felt from there and Earth. Several characters, the Ghost Dog Bats, a dog Doctor Strange adopted, Zelma Stanton, Doctor Strange's student, and the Planet of the Watchers, nearly omnipotent beings of neutrality who, well, watch, know that things are in danger and hope it doesn't get any worse. Doctor Strange then realizes that someone tampered with the planet's dark energy. It is consuming Galactus and the obstacles along their way were designed to weaken him. Dormammu has played his hand, fusing with Galactus and becoming one with the mystic realm. Clea and Umar bargain with Mephisto, the devil and an adversary of several Marvel heroes, who reveals he is actually conspiring with Dormammu and captures the two. Doctor Strange tries to soothe Galactus, but the entity swats Strange away. In a void, he is caught by Dormammu, who wants him to see the universe crumble through his machinations. Mephisto relishes his love for playing Puppet Master, while Doctor Strange begs for Dormammu to release Galactus. Dormammu claims he can do anything and go anywhere with Galactus under his thrall. Each realm he rips apart leaves behind a door. He wants to wreck the Earth and lay all the Avengers, Earth's Midas heroes, at his feet, completely broken. And despite this boast, Doctor Strange is relieved that this is all that he wants, claiming that when his ambition outstrips his ability, Dormammu is easier to defeat. Yet the chaos of the happenings is affecting several worlds. The Skrulls, a race of well-known shapeshifters panic, and Reed Richards, otherwise known as Mr. Fantastic and Tony Stark, Iron Man, fight to make sense of it all as science rewrites itself. Doctor Strange guiles to play on Dormammu's ego, his biggest weakness. Dormammu announces himself as Galactus's master, but the World Eater proclaims himself no servant, and the two do battle until Galactus captures and consumes Dormammu, proclaiming himself the commander of science and sorcery. Lying to Dormammu's aide Yokolan by swearing he would bring back Dormammu, Doctor Strange absorbs his energies and goes to face Mephisto, who is taking control of Clea and Umar. Doctor Strange tells the devil that magic is hemorrhaging into the domain of science, and his kingdom is not immune to the effects, which is seen as several infernal mountaintops in his realm are starting to digitize. Doctor Strange bargains with Mephisto to have one deed the devil can call upon at a future date if he releases the two. The bargain is struck, and Mephisto sends a trio to the Dorothea Crossroads, where Clea and Umar leave to recruit allies. Meanwhile, Galactus destroys and merges, and science and magic trade play Places with increasing speed. Galactus' evolution reaches its peak, and he becomes the remaining boundary between the magic and mortal realms, acting as a conduit. Doctor Strange speaks with Eternity, the collective consciousness of all life, and the Living Tribunal, an entity that oversees and maintains balance in the realities that constitute the Marvel Comics multiverse, serving as a judge about confronting Galactus, but both entities see no reason to step in. They say that magic and science are simply blending, and they will find their own harmony, while Doctor Strange comments that it is only after universal annihilation. Meanwhile, Zolos is being tried by his people and existence alters. The supreme intelligence of the Kree, a scientifically and technologically advanced militaristic alien race, the Shi'ar Empire, a vast collection of alien species, cultures, and worlds, the scientists of Earth, and the throne of Asgard all feel and sense the changes. Galactus no longer hungers and has found balance, that the cost of everything getting ripped the new one. Science no longer makes sense, and magic is becoming too sensical. Doctor Strange forms an alliance of many magic-based heroes from Earth with Wanda the Scarlet Witch and his student Zelma Stanton among their numbers, and soon they are joined by many heroes who have faced galactic threats before, including the Silver Surfer, the Super Skrull who is a Skrull super soldier with the powers of the Fantastic Four, the Incredible Hulk, Black Bolt, King of the Inhumans, and many others. Doctor Strange then orders them to keep a tight formation and keep their faith. After all, they've got a god to topple. 
The magic alliance formed by Clea and Umar reach Galactus and engage him. Umar is upset at Doctor Strange's absence, but Clea knows that he is gathering reinforcements. Galactus begins obliterating his opposition, as expected of a god of existence, and even the great demon Satanish can barely hold his own against Galactus. Satanish is consumed as he begs to serve, but he instead empowers Galactus. Doctor Strange's alliance of heroes arrives and immediately engages, while Umar glares at Strange suspicious. He tells them of the effects of Galactus' influence. Robots rampage through the Dark Dimension, man-made structures turn into ectoplasm and crumble, and so much more. The stronger Galactus grows, the more reality destabilizes. He even blasts the Silver Surfer when his former Herald tries to reason with him. Yet they do manage to stagger Galactus with a scream from Black Bolt but Galactus crushes him after pushing through his screams. He absorbs Black Bolt's energies, but it causes a ripple effect that affects people across reality. Gladiator of the Shi'ar Empire, the strongest warrior, puts up a heroic effort, but Galactus disintegrates him. And this is where things get really crazy. Doctor Strange then reveals his plan to Clea as the heroes charge in memory of Gladiator. They need to fight their hardest and have Galactus absorb them so he will reach critical mass. Doctor Strange plans to aim for an Eldritch Blast of Magic to split Galactus open and force him to regurgitate what he has consumed, fixing existence. And from there, he strikes Galactus in the forest head at the very right time and blanks out of existence. He then sits in a white void in complete nothingness pondering his actions. Doctor Strange cannot measure time while in the void. Eternity then appears and asks if Doctor Strange thinks of himself as a god. Since, get this, only he, Eternity, and one unnamed other exists outside of a collapsed universe reduced to a singularity. He is, by definition, a god. Doctor Strange realizes that Mephisto is responsible for this and that he is calling in his debt. He explains that instead of exploding, Galactus imploded and Strange survived because he was not there. Doctor Strange goes on to say that Hell also remains because while tangible to the universe, Hell is not a part of it. Needless to say, Mephisto was not happy. Mephisto then gives him an option, operate on the singularity. He is given permission by the Living Tribunal to do so, who reminds him that magic always has a price. Doctor Strange muses that there is literally nothing to lose, so how can there be a price? And so, Doctor Strange performs reconstructive surgery on all of existence. And somewhat surprisingly, he doesn't change anything, the good and the bad, the progress and atrocities, the heroes and villains, everything goes back to the status quo. Doctor Strange returns to the moment that Zolos confronted him, holds him in place and advises him to manage his rage. Doctor Strange tells him that there is no permanent solution to Galactus and the only thing that can save a planet is to become his herald. He asks if Zolos is truly his people's hero and he chooses to become a herald while being reviled by his people for not dying in battle. Balance is restored. The Living Tribunal asks what Doctor Strange will do, and he says that he wants to better himself at Clea's side. But he is brought to hell, where Mephisto points out that he made no request to Doctor Strange, so he is still in the devil's debt. Mephisto wants to name the price for giving Doctor Strange an option, and the price is Doctor Strange's relationship with Clea. From there, the deal is struck, effectively erasing Clea's memory of Doctor Strange as he sits alone in the sanctum, lost in his thoughts. I am Stephen Strange, Sorcerer Supreme. The path I walk, I walk alone. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.